you go. There, we go. there you go. Got it. So this is going to be um, kind of a day at the table, but it's going to be whatever the Lord wants. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be a meeting, a meeting today. Good, good. We need a meeting because, yeah. you know, from time to time, and I'm trying to change the view, but it's not, it's not doing what I want. But anyhow, who cares? We'll just leave it like this. But um, with all of that said, you know, I told you I have meetings with with <laughs> them in the morning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, mm. I have meetings with them, you know, and then there are other times they just meet individually, you know. But, yeah. you know, when I miss my meeting. Oh, it, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it too. I don't. I don't want to. I don't anymore. Oh, I just, no, no, no. So like I if I run an errand, you know, or something, yeah. and I'm like, okay, it's, my time has been messed up today. My and, routine. Oh, <laughs> <you work. laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, we get back on it. And um, <laughs> so good, though, to, yeah. be, to have that relationship with our father, you know, to have that relationship with Yahushua. Yeah. Spirit, you know, to have that, and I know you know, but it's important that we talk about this because this is his heart. He mm -hmm. wants everyone to know what it's like to have a relationship with him. And there's many people that do that come to the table. But it is, um, we're really at a point where he's calling people, um, I don't want to say desperately, but he's saying, I don't know the word to use. We're calling people desperately to come to him. He's drawing people. Well, it's the rubber is about to meet the road. Yeah. So we, and I, I heard this a while ago, and it's so true many profess to be Christians until it gets biblical and it's about to get biblical in biblical proportions. And this is no lie, no joke. This is serious times that we're coming into, whether you believe it or not. And it is going to happen in our lifetime. Okay. Let me just see something. I got a note that says that we're not live on Facebook. So does that mean we are live someplace else? Let's take uh, a look. Are oh, we is live? that that message from Mike? Yeah. So I'm just looking. Okay. So we're not live on my personal face, Facebook page. And we are live on, on Come to the Table. So I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, there he is. Okay. Okay. He says, okay, it's live now. You're welcome to come up, Mike. Come on up. You're welcome. And so anyhow, so anyhow I'm just going to, let's, we're going to get into the conversation later. But, so we're just mm -hmm. going to um, do some other things. So I'm going to talk about the, the day for a minute. Okay. And I got mm -hmm. this crazy thing going on with my hair. You look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> look. <laughs> you know, then I was like, oh, this is a little too big. I know. I, I hate bad hair days. That's why I wear a hat. But anyhow, so we are in the Hebrew month of Nisan. It's not Nisan, it's Nisan, sun. And we're, this is the 23rd, excuse me, the 26th day of March. And um, Thursday was the first day of this new month. That was, that was 3-23-23. And you know what? I can say that this month is about beginnings, fulfillment, new beginnings. Mm. And I have felt a new beginning. I have felt change. Yeah. Uh, I have. I mean, yeah, I have consistently before then, but I'm feeling a much larger change in 
in everything. So that's good. So it is really a new beginning. And I hope everyone's feeling that. So press into it, press into him. So the number three, again, we talked about triune being, we talked about spirit, soul, and body. We talked about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We talked about conformity, conformity to Christ, divine fellowship, completion, and perfection. So we, we said that that's maturity. So we know that's number three. And we're, we're going to be ending this month soon. So we might as well talk about it as much as possible. Here we go. <laughs> so at the number 26. Okay, this is the 26th day. And it speaks on the positive side. It says that it's God our deliverer and king, okay? The number of the Hebrew name of God, so Y-H-V-H. I guess that number is 26. So this is a special day. And it says the promise of a new beginning. So it's two plus six equals eight. And again, on the positive side, the gospel of Christ, repentance, and the turning back to God. On the negative side of this day, it's utter rebellion. And it's to be accountable for work, the work of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So that is today. That's interesting because he was talking to me yesterday about winking his eye and I thought, yeah. Lord, to, to wink you are, your eye, you, you close it for a second. There is no time in heaven. So he has winked at all of this stuff, but his eyes are open now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad, see, I, I heard him say that a while back, but mm -hmm. to hear, he's like, when you hear something once and then twice, and sometimes even three times, you know that we're getting closer to that time and you know that. oh yeah and he's yeah. speaking a lot of twos and threes you know three times um and we just know that we're getting closer and so 23 the year is transition partial divine judgment and punishment fullness of reward and inheritance so there's always a positive and negative and we know that this is 23 is 2023 is an interesting year, um, just to state that. And um, it speaks of judgment. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. This is a crucial time mm -hmm. that we're living in, a very crucial time. So... One final thing that I kind of want to mention before we go on to something else, and this may be the last time I mention it, um, but it's about the name change. So it's not really a name change. It's just using the proper name of God, Jesus, and Yahweh. We have, we, I guess I should say truth has been revealed. And when truth is revealed, you walk in it. If and then more truth is revealed. Yeah. And more and more. <laughs> and that's good. Yeah. And so when he says, this is the truth, um, you walk in it. If you don't hear him say that when other people are saying it, you don't walk in it. You wait till you know you either have revelation of it or he has spoken to you clearly mm -hmm. and we know that that um he spoke to you clearly and we also taught on it so once sometimes once you teach on something it starts to become like that first time then mm -hmm. the second time and so he told you that his name, Jesus told you that his name is Yahushua. My name is Yahushua. There you go. So once you hear that, um, that's what you go with. And Yahushua is actually the Hebrew name for Joshua, right? And we had been using Yeshua. 
And, but that's not it. So it's just a shorter form of Yahushua. And so mm-hmm. if he says his name is Yahushua, I say it's the most beautiful name I've ever heard. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> I said that's the most beautiful name. And you know what I don't... name do you think you will confess when you're on your knee? What name will the whole world confess? Yeah. This is a day of truth being revealed. This is a new day. And in this new day, he is bringing truth. He's bringing truth to his name. He's Purity. Bringing... Yeah. And in tr- he's bringing, you know, what the enemy, I, I hate to put it that way, but it's the truth. What the enemy stole from him, he's going to get back. Mm-hmm. He's going to get back. He is going to get, and he's going to make sure his children have what has been stolen from them. Yeah. And in this day, he's going to correct some of these translations. I know it already. I know I've seen it. (laughs) I've heard it, right? We've heard it. We've heard it. So so anyhow, with the father's name, um, we use the name Yahweh for a long time. And now um, he revealed, Holy Spirit revealed that his name is Yehovah. Yehovah. I get the D in there. Yehovah. (laughs) Yehovah. And that is, I mean, it's, you know, we've seen so many confusing things out there. If you look on YouTube, you've got everybody pronouncing it all these different ways. And they're all saying, this is the way, you know, and, but if the Lord reveals it to you personally as a, as one way, all the others just no longer matter. You know, as if I can share this, he spoke to me two two words. It was at the time I he didn't. I at the time it was Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Rofi, not Rafa Rafi Rofi. So I, I said Rofi, and they're like, "No, it's not Rofi. It's Rafa." I'm like, uh, "Wait a minute." I just tabled it because I knew I heard him say Rofi. Then I looked it up. And it's Rofi, not Rafa. Yeah. So, so I go by what he tells me. Yeah. And so, and the thing is, you heard Jehovah, but Yehovah sounds like Jehovah. Yeah. Yehovah yeah. sounds like Jehovah. So it's. Uh, you know, people say, well, it's Yod Hey Vah Hey. It's all these different things. Even the, the Hebrews, the Jews will say that. That's fine. I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm going to call him Yehovah. Yeah. He answers. He will answer. He knows your heart. Yeah. So let's just take a little bit of time to, to talk to the Lord because he, yeah. this is his table. This is not our table. This is the table of the Lord. And we just recognize that you are here, Lord. We recognize you by your spirit. We recognize you by your presence. We recognize you because, you know, if someone can't feel your presence, they just need to know that you said, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. I will always be there. And they just need to keep looking at that and trusting and believing. You said, just believe. And then once you start believing, then the actual, your presence starts to increase into their lives. And so we just want your presence to increase here today. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. And it is a delight to meet with you, with your body on at this time every Sunday. It's a, it's a good time to, to eat 
of you at the table in the presence of our enemies, knowing that you are lifting your people up and you're saying, these are mine, these belong to me. And the enemy can watch us celebrate each other and love on each other. And we're just, we sup together with your food, the food of your word. We just What are diadems? They're crowns. Because he's opening up his robe, like opening up across the table and I see all these sparkling. They look like, I don't know, like cities, but they're, and the word diadem came to me. Whoa. Like his robe is not covering the table, but his robe is opening up like the table. And I see all these sparkly. And I'm looking at him and he's got a strong jaw. And diadems are like all inside his robe that is opening from the inside out on the table. Well, these are, um, he said they're diadems, but they're like cities, you said. Yeah. And it's like a map. It looks like a map on the table. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Do you know? I, I I can just tell you what I'm sensing out of that. Do it. Good. <laughs> so he is king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. Right? So he is the king of kings. And when you're a king of kings, you have kings under you. And Yahushua has sons. He has sons of God who will be manifested in the earth. And they have crowns on their heads. They are going to go out and to the nations to heal them, to be peacemakers, make peace. And it's not peace with the enemy. Please hear me. This is peacemakers shall be called children or sons of God. These sons of God with crowns, they have crowns on their head, just like Yahushua. They are sons, not servants. They are sons. They are manifested sons. And in this day, he will send them out all over this earth. Mm -hmm. And they will go out and they will right the wrong and they will turn cities right side up and they will bring in the harvest and they will be just like him saviors he's the savior he is the head of the body he is the king of kings and lord of lords but he sends his own out who have been trained under him to go out and bring in the harvest take down what isn't of the lord and to pluck up what isn't of the Lord, but to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. And that was a blueprint. He's got a beautiful jawline, like stern, that speaks to me of the power and authority. Yeah. Yeah. He's beautiful, but, but fearsome at the same time. Fe uh, beautiful but it's like a holy fear like you are lord you yes. are yes God of, you are king of yes. kings you are lord of lords absolutely he is it was his left jawbone too right here okay i'll look it like up chisel well you know it's like um the jawbone let me look it up 
The jawbone does speak of power and strength. I know it does, but let me just confirm that. I might find something else in here. That was beautiful. So that, that confirms too what we're gonna talk about today. Um, so let me just see. Mm, jaw. So he opened up his robe, so we are still hidden. We're about to be revealed across the world. I mean, his chosen and those like us. <laughs> yeah. So the jaw speaks of a powerful, dominating voice or power, powerful spoken words. Um, and it does speak of one's ability to speak the truth, you know, um, and, you know, when I see that, I, I was just, um, studying about, you know, Holy Spirit never speaks of himself. You know, no. he speaks of the father. He speaks of the son. Right. Yeah. And he searches the deep things of them and reveals them, even the deep things of our own hearts. He'll search. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these sons are not about self. No. Not promoting, you know, they they are much like Holy Spirit in the way that they lift up the king of glory the one that deserves all honor power and praise they have been through the fire they've been through affliction of the soul they've been through training and they know his goodness. They know his fatherhood. They know that. His love. Oh, yeah. His love. And that there's nothing more powerful than him. There's no hey, one it's not more right. loving. There's no one more loving. There's no one more kind. There's no one more beautiful. There's no one that can compare to him. There's no one. He is so wonderful. He is wonderful. He is counselor. He is everything you need. And he is all about his children that love him. He's all about them. You know, how can you, you know, someone that comes to you and just lavishes his love on you, you know? How can even you? in the midst of even in the midst of the fire, he's still right there, comforting and it's gonna be okay. Just keep coming. We're not done yet. Keep coming. Trust me. Yeah. I've had him tell me before, out of the blue, do you trust me? You know, and he said, just trust me. And I said, okay, Lord. And I felt something happen deep within my heart. He came into something that was hidden or buried. I can't explain it, but I knew what happened. I felt something happen. I was like, oh, Lord, you, you search the inner depths of me all you want. Yeah. I trust you completely. See, and that's key because sometimes we turn away. When we don't understand exactly we understand what's going on or we give up yeah well that's the same thing as turning away so yeah. don't turn away run yeah. to him yes yes because you know and that's one thing that we've tried to talk about over and over again. Mm -hmm. you know, he he's working to, on the salvation of our souls yeah and you know, he died and paid a heavy price 
for to bring sons to glory, you know, to redeem this earth, to this is his earth. He paid for, he paid for a Holy Ghost schooling. Don't do it. <laughs> Education. <laughs> <laughs> best education you can get right the best teacher you could ever ask for because absolutely you know what when he's done with you you have a oh. Smile. Oh, you have a smile on your face and love in your heart you know you yeah. have joy and peace and you know that there's no one that can ever take his place. No one. No, and the memories that you create with him, that he creates with you, the, the lessons are beyond price. No money could ever pay for these lessons that he teaches you. And you look back and it's like, Lord, you, you, I have these memories with him. And I look back, it's like, Lord, I've asked him from the beginning, like, I want to make memories with you. You know, I don't want any, you said the past is done. The past is done. I don't want those memories anymore. I want to make memories with you. Yeah. And we do. Yeah. Yeah. And what we were talking about earlier, even before the broadcast is um, that we didn't mention this, but you know, this, this is a new day and we know that we've been talking about that for a while yeah. and um, everything's new. So we also know from some of the visions that he's given you that he's, he's writing what's, what's happening, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's what we were talking about. He's writing. What's the story? You know, there's more to the story. Because yeah. We're going back into we're, we're the kingdom is being established, you know? And we're going back to that place, but even better, mm -hmm. in the garden, knowing that we're in the garden, in the kingdom, you know, in his family, yeah. you know, having that relationship where he wants everyone to know him, you know, that everyone would know the Lord, you know, that they didn't, wouldn't have to go to this person or that person have you seen him have you seen him oh that makes me sick to my stomach now yeah. it does because he has said many times that the, the uh seek me while i may be found oh. and he has said that the windows of communication are open so you can get a hold of him personally stop going to everybody else and go to him yeah just you and him that's it it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the mm -hmm. truth. And, you know, one of the other things that he has said, um, you know, he is the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. He's everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And there have been people that have have exalted who they are yeah. instead of exalting him. And that's a scary place to be. It's not, you, it's not profitable for you. You do not want to be there. Anyway. If you are there, you know in your heart where you're at. You cannot lie to yourself. This is between you and him. If you are there, please get off the pedestal repent or you'll be taken down the sons have the sons know that the mm -hmm. sons that he's been working with they know that they would never exalt themselves he will never share his glory with any man man shall not be exalted nor will man share in his glory no flesh will stand in his presence. I can tell you that. And we love it. <laughs> <laughs> we love, well, we love yeah. it. So 
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that vision. It was absolutely beautiful. And the revelation that comes with it. We just love you and appreciate you so much. You just, you lead us today. Lead us in what you want to talk about. And we just want to, we want to bless your heart. We want to give you the delights of your heart, what you enjoy. So I think what we'll do is we're going to, you know, I was going to play music and everything, but um, it, the reason why I like to play music is I just want to take time to exalt him, but yeah. I know we've been doing that, you know, in your conversation, we've been doing it and we will continue to do it. You know, if you want to hear some music, we'll play it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and maybe we'll do it later or maybe we'll do it now. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, care, but I, he's, he's wonderful. He's beautiful. He's altogether lovely. There's no one better than him. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm to tell you all about him out of the Song yeah. of Solomon. Everything's, everything's true. Everything is true. Mm -hmm. And even more. The, it, the, he is beyond human understanding. Or description. All, yeah. Our hearts can speak what our mouths can't. And his love is... I will talk about his love because it is a power. Yeah. It is a presence that flows through you that no i'm a man so no woman could ever love me and i'm talking about the the emotional the power of love no child no family member nobody nothing can love you the way he does i'm you know it but i'm telling you the truth and the weapons of our warfare are mighty and are pulling down the strongholds, but the greatest of these weapons is love. And people, you know, spiritual warfare, everybody's getting so caught up in spiritual warfare. You know, my first thought lately has been, who picks the battles, you or him? And does he tell you to go into spiritual warfare? Is he, you know, are you picking the battle? Or what is really going on? Are you going through the fire and you don't understand what's going on? Because if you're constantly in spiritual warfare, you're going to be worn out. You're going to have hope deferred. You're going to have all these different things because you're distracted. Because the enemy is winning. How is he winning? He's keeping your eyes off of the very one who created the enemy in the first place. Mm -hmm. So keep your eyes on him and enjoy his love. If people are saying, well, I, I've got to change. I got to make my, you ain't got to make yourself. You can't make yourself. His love changes you. His, the fire of his love, it changes you. It melts off all the junk, the mindsets that have been Pounded in your head for years and years by religious teachers, preachers who thought they knew, but, and I'm not condemning or trash talking anybody. What I'm saying is he, he gets rid of all that. Then you come to that place where it's like you begin to hear life. When you hear life, it's from him. You hunger for more and more of that. And the more the, the, the he said, Ask of me living waters, and I will give it to you abundantly. You drink that living water, it's life-giving. The washing of the water of the word, the more you hear the truth, the more the lies begin to become unveiled. And then they lose their power, their stronghold. Then they have to leave because darkness cannot dwell in light. And the closer you draw to him, I mean, I, I pray we all just get lost in his heart that we are no longer visible anymore, but it's just him. I pray we all have that 
yearning, that insatiable desire to just be so one with him. Yes. Where we don't exist. Yes, we exist, but merely as a human temple to hold his glory. Yes, yes. But to run and be lost in his heart. And then the, the false stuff, the counterfeit, you, you spot it right away. You know, my sheep shall know my voice. So that's good. Now, I just want to say that if you would like to come up to Zoom, anyone would like to come up to Zoom, if they love the Lord, they want to, you know, just receive prayer or anything like that, um, you're welcome. You know, anyone that loves him is welcome. Anybody that wants him is welcome. Anybody that wants salvation to receive it is welcome. So I'm giving you a lot of different categories. If you want to fight, debate, you're not welcome. And you right. will get out. So I'm just making that very clear. Okay. So, but if you want to come up and you have a heart for him, come up. <laughs> we had fun last, last time. Come up. We'd, we'd love to have you. So, um, so I say, I actually shared that link so i'll be looking to see if someone come anyone comes up mm -hmm. so um i we we know i'm just going to start start in on what what i was going to talk about and this is a time of discussion too and you know if we want to go back and do something later we can you know so we're we're open to whatever holy spirit wants to do so we know from looking at the date that this is a time of divine justice and judgment. Mm -hmm. It's also a time of glory. And, you know, there's nothing, I, you know, I was always told that, oh, that's a coincidence. Oh, that's a coincidence. Oh, that's, that's, that's a coincidence. And then I started to realize that there's a lot of things that aren't coincidence, you know, but all my life I've been told that's a coincidence, you know, and so I started to believe that things were, you know, we're not in the month of March. Nice. Yeah, right. Um, we're not in the day of the 26th and talking about judgment. By mere well, coincidence. Yeah, <laughs> the year of 2023. And the thing about this is um, there's a lot of people Christ, that would say that we've already been judged. And, you know, I said that for a long time. If you're in Christ and you are... Um, you're in him and you know that you are right with him. You, you have a heart towards him. You've made him Lord. You've already been judged. And he, if he's Lord in your life, then you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. If you're in Christ and you're still living for yourself, you might find that your life is going to shake a little bit. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Yeah. So just jump in whenever you want to. So, and I, so let me just say this, that I, we know that the glory is coming. We know that. And a lot of people just talk about that. But there's always, there's a positive side and a negative side. And in order for when the, when the glory comes, and you've talked about this before, um, when the glory is poured out, that his people receive it one way 
and the enemy or non-believers receive it a different way. And in him, there's always protection. Outside of him, there isn't. Mm -hmm. We saw that in several visions that you've had recently that we've talked about, including the, the ark. And that it's going to, this, this is, we're coming to such a glorious time. I mean, if we just talk about the vision that we saw, you saw today, I say we, because you shared it. Um, You're fine. That's okay. You know, it's, that is, was a beautiful, beautiful vision. But we also know that in order, the way I interpreted it, um, the world has to be ready for that. And how do they get ready for that? They get ready for judgment, right? Okay. So, and you've been talking about this for a long time. So we know that we're getting closer to, go ahead. Oh, I just, the judgment, the cup of wrath has been poured out. I mean, it's, it, it's happening in the spirit. What happens in the spirit will manifest in the natural. The, I'm reminded again of the visions of the, uh, the, the priests walking in the woods. They were carrying bowls. They, the more I see it, the more I think on it. These are the prayers of the saints. They were carrying these to the high priests. Then the high priests took these bowls to the eight. The the eight sided. Yeah. Altar of incense. The the altar was gold. But eight. And they all knew their place and they went and put it. And then number nine. And then he spoke to me and said that. Forgive me, because I, I, if I don't, I try to write it all down, but, and I do. But he said, the prayer of the saints have come before me, and the cup is filled up. And then after that, it was a couple of days later or a week later, he said that the cup overflows and is being poured out, the judgment. And he said, it is as, it, it is as you have said. I'm like, whoa, Lord, my heart. You got to understand, he, 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 I have, my heart's been heavy for a while, like crying, pleading, begging people, you know, and it's like, Lord, what do you want me to do? I want to tell my family. I've told certain members that will hear, but not everybody's ready to hear. And it is the, it's a desperation, like, please, please, please listen, please. I don't care what you think you may know. I don't care what you, if you have all kinds of revelation, I don't care. This isn't, and we talked about this. Like, I was like, Lord, I don't want to cry wolf, but I'm not because I know this is coming. What is coming? He has been speaking to us for well over a year, almost two years now, preparing us. And what he does is he tells us things in advance. And then we begin to hear it from other people. And then it's like it's a culmination of all these things. It's getting ready to happen. It's going to happen in our lifetime. You cannot run from it. Don't don't. If you run from it, run to him. That's the only place you can go. But I just, I beg everyone. It hurts. It it hurts. It's sad. It breaks my heart. It breaks his heart. If I could just ask you, please. I don't care if you think you're right. I don't care what you may think. I don't. Neither does he. Humble. Just humble yourself and go to him. 
the Hirun give you whatever you may need at the time. Just do it. If you do walk away, the choice will be made for you. It will. I pray you just go to him, please. Just. Let down your guard, whatever it is that is holding you. Let it down, let go. Just go to him. It's between you and him anyways. It's not between you and anybody else. It's just you and him. It's all that matters. Not your family, not your friends, not your ministry. Not your pride, your ego, your clout. None of that's going to matter. It doesn't matter now. For whatever you hold on to will be taken from you. If you hold on to him, no one can take you from him. He said, I and those that my father has given me, no one can take from me. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Yes. We are heading into serious times. And I, they are going to be gut-wrenching. I know he said this before. There's going to be gut-wrenching decisions that will have to be made. But you have to understand, there is a greater plan and purpose in all of this. And we may not understand everything, and that's okay. That is perfectly fine. Everything is done in righteous right order. Nothing is ever done in vain. Everything has a plan and purpose. And what we don't understand, we give to him. And he will reveal to us what we need to know if he chooses to show us. But the greatest thing is to trust him alone to hold his hand, to hear his voice only, not be persuaded or distracted by anything else or anyone else. And it's not a time to fear. For you will see mighty, marvelous, Miraculous, powerful, the presence and power of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. For he is victorious and he goes before us. And we follow in his footsteps. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. So, um, you know, Mark has shared many visions and some dreams and words, and um, and still, you you know, when you have a vision shared with you, it can't be explained you know, 100%, this is exactly what it's going to look like because right. visions are pictures. You know, sometimes things are very clear yeah, and sometimes they represent something. And 
you know, if you look at the book of Revelation, it's a lot of different pictures. Mm -hmm. What is the book about? It's about yeah. the feeling <laughs> of their worship. It's about the revealing of him and the revealing of him in his people. It's about him um, and his defeat of the enemy and how he even uses his people to defeat the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's about him being victorious and it's about a people that love him that worship him and they become victorious because of the nature of the overcomer him mm -hmm. being in the overcomer and being wrapped up in love with him mm -hmm. <laughs> overcome because of the blood of the lamb the word of his testimony and yours and that you love not your life and if that is your suke life your natural earthly life your human life then so be it. But there are a people that we've mentioned that will give their life gladly for him. Because when you know him, you find out there's nothing better than him. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to settle for anything less than him when I have him because he has me, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and so you know him in that way. So you're, you're willing to give anything and everything because what you get in return is him. His yeah. love. His love. He, he is our exceeding great reward. And that's all I want. Yeah. You keep everything else. And I don't care. I just want him. So the book of Revelation has a lot of different pictures in it. And we are we, in Revelation. We are, but does it look exactly? No. Like the looks, you know, no. think about it. It doesn't because it's symbolic. Mm -hmm. The Lord speaks in symbols and pictures. Yes, he speaks with an audible voice, but he also speaks in dreams and visions and they are their pictures. And what I, one thing I love about him is like you've said earlier, you know, he gives you a little something and you research it, you figure out what it is, you know, and then he'll give you a little something more. <laughs> and it's like you're building this understanding and you're building this revelation and you're building this relationship with him and you're learning how he speaks. Mm -hmm. If it's audible, if it's not, if it's a small, still voice, if it's dreams, visions, whatever, if it's a knowing. Those who have ears to hear will hear it. And any manner of language he chooses to speak to you, he knows how to get a hold of you. And if you have those ears to hear, you will. Mm -hmm. He can use he can use a donkey to speak to you. He can, however he wants, he will. Yeah. So this book of Revelation, it's the revealing of of Yahushua, mm -hmm. and in the end, of yeah. The there's no end <laughs> the city in the last chapters there's a glorious city and yeah. Eden is restored and there he is the father's there every thing that the father and the son are there 
Yeah. Father and the Son. Yeah. And it's a city where he's the king. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't rule and reign like a, a king on the earth does. No. no. There's no, there's not very, I've never even heard of a king that rules in such a way that eventually it's just, you know, oh, the love that you feel from this king is like, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> No. Wait, no. you want me to go? I don't want to go. I just want to stay here with you. All right, uh, but I want to stay. Yeah, and you melt. Uh, it melts. You melt yeah. our hearts, Lord. You know, it's like you are love. Mm -hmm. But sometimes self wants to be the ruler, and that's mm -hmm. what the problem is. Yeah, the enemy came into the garden. The enemy started it all. But then what happened was self became ruler in many people's lives because they listened to the enemy over him. Mm -hmm. And everything that's not of him will be defeated. And, you know, is that a threat? Well, let me tell you, it's the best threat you could ever have. Because if you're living for yourself, <laughs> it's, it's a promise. I don't care. There's no, you know, even if you say, well, I've got this and I've got that, I've got this. Well, it's all temporal if it's not him. It's all going to fade away. And does it really give you joy? Do you, you know, that's the bottom line. Well, you know, you've got to work for these items. You go out and buy a brand new boat. Guess what? You got to work for your idol. Yeah. It's all we talked about this, but there is nothing or no one can satisfy you the way you can. I've said it and I'll keep saying it. I don't care if all I have is a cardboard box with bread and water. If I have him and I do, that's all I want. I don't care about anything else. Nothing can satisfy me the way he this relationship. That's so true. But you know what happens? It's like sometimes people do not press into the relationship. So they never get to the place where they're, they've actually tasted of his goodness. No, they, they taste his blessings and that's all they like. Yeah. So that's what the problem is. It's, and that's what he is kind of, sh that's one of the main problems. That's something he shared. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. So okay. <laughs> let me just say this. And what I was trying to say out of all of, of sharing the book of Revelation, if we look at the mm -hmm. whole thing as a whole, what it's saying to us, there's judgment in there. And, you know, Babylon, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, which I always get ahead of myself. And then I have to, you know, but Babylon is evil. It's religious confusion. It is self being um, God. It's glorified, yeah. Yeah, it's rebellion. You know, mm -hmm. it's everything that God, Jehovah, hates. And if we look at his word, he hates rebellion, he hates pride. He calls, uh, is it rebellion as, as witchcraft? I think so. Idolatry is causing something, one of, I don't remember. I ain't got it in front of me. But he hates it. So he hates it. And he is knocking the walls down. He is shaking that kingdom because it can be shaken. And it's going to be destroyed. And when he's done... He's going to have the most beautiful kingdom for those that choose him established mm -hmm. in their lives. And when it's established in your life, we know we've talked about this, then it automatically pours out of you. And, you know, if you're a person that walks around with joy, his joy, then people see it it's not fake it's real it's who you are it's what he's done in you 
you know, it's about, it's about being in the secret place of the most high, you know, that's a place where one of the places that you were changed, you can't mm -hmm. help but be changed, be just like him in the place where you dwell with him. You know, the one that you hang out with is the one that you're going to be like. Mm -hmm. So if you hang out with the morning paper and the evening paper and the evening news, you're missing out. If you replace that worldly stuff one thing at a time and just add studying his word, being with him in whatever way, you know, the way I'm with them might not be the way you're with them. I can't, I'm not, it's like I'm no legalism. You know, we can't be legalistic about this. It's a relationship. You know, you have found him outside. I, when it's cold, I don't like to go outside. <laughs> I, I so, meet with him everywhere, but those are my, those are like my, my, my special times with him. Yeah. It's like going to the ten of meetings, I guess, where we he shares many things with me. Yeah. It's and, our time. And he knows it's your time. That's that's a relationship that you have you have together. So mm -hmm. everybody, everybody can find that place. Doesn't have to look like somebody else. Because mm -hmm. we're not we're not robots. We're not um we don't compare. No, we don't compare. You're right with each other. We're all different. But let me just say this. I said all of that about the book of Revelation because it talks about judgment to bring a kingdom. So when people say the Lord is coming, he is coming. But keep in mind that it says in Acts 3.21, I'm going to read it from a couple different um, translations. And we've talked about this before. So it says, heaven must take him in, keep him, retain him until the time comes for the restoration of all things, which God announced long ago through his holy prophets. So Amplified says, whom heaven must keep until the time for the complete restoration of all things about which God promised through the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. So we have to realize the Lord comes in different ways. And mm -hmm. we know that he wants to come to earth, but he's not going to come to earth until there's a restoration of all things. Can the restoration of all things happen quickly? They can. But what we saw is he comes in a way maybe we're not familiar with. And he pours out. And he walks with us. And he... We do what he can't do, and he does what we can't do. Mm -hmm. He passes out the royal diadems. He sends you on that, you know, he gives you the blueprint. He gives you the map, and he says, mm -hmm. this is where you go. This is who you go with. This is who, this is an army. This is your you're, you know, I'm the commander in chief, he says. And then this, this would be the rank and nobody breaks rank. You know, everyone in their order where they're supposed to be not complaining, very happy that they have the opportunity to serve him. He's with them. He's with them in a way that they've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. They get the job done. I'm just putting this out. Yeah. Job done. Yeah. They, he, he creates the atmosphere 
so that this all starts, okay? Mm-hmm. That atmosphere is the judgment. It is the pouring out. It is the wrath. And what does it look like? Well, it looks like a lot of different things. Some of the things we've talked about, financial collapses. They've already started to happen. Anything that someone has made an idol over him, you might find it collapses. You might find that you wherever you place your, I'm not talking to you, wherever you, whoever, and this is like, whoever's listening, this might be for your family members. This might be your, for your friends. It might be for you to share, but wherever they've placed idols, they're going to fall. We've talked about that just a little while ago. They're going to fall. So what happens in the midst of darkness and chaos and destruction of whatever that looks like, the manifested sons go, 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 go. They go throughout the entire world. Mm-hmm. There isn't a single place that doesn't hear about the gospel. There isn't a single place that does not hear that he's king of kings and lord of lords and that he loves them or they might have to do some some battling what does that battling look like it's ruling and reigning it's standing in your position in christ and not backing down it's it's your authority this Mm -hmm. is what the kingdom looks like anything else is junk it's correcting. It's establishing. Mm-hmm. Judgment shows what is right. When you get down, his judgment says, if you're feeling it, you better take a look at what your life is saying. If it's saying, I love money over him, if I love people over him, whatever it is, it's going to shake it because he said, you're to love your Lord, the Lord, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. He is to be your first love. And if you've created a situation where something else is over him and you say you belong to him, you're going to feel some shaking. And your heart, if you say you belong to him and your heart is elsewhere, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't lie to him. He's not coming back in his glory for a weak church, a weak body. You know, he's not coming back for half hearted people. So in his mercy, in his mercy and grace, he shakes people so that they they feel uh, the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you know He's the only one. There's nothing else. There's no one else that can help when you turn to him. And that's what judgment's all about. And when this is this is accomplished, will we see him? Yeah. He wants to be here. Excuse me. Right? Yeah, he does. He wants to be here because you mm-hmm. said to me, I'll just share this, you know, because he brought you to heaven and you experienced that. And you said, I don't want to leave, Lord. No. 
and I want to stay. I want to come back. And he said to you, I want to come there. Mm -hmm. So that tells me he wants to come here. There's a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah, I've seen it. It comes down. Yeah. It's a heavenly realm. Go ahead. The old heaven and the old earth is being getting ready to be rolled up. The picture, the scroll, what used to be is getting ready to be rolled up. Taken out of existence. A memory from long ago. Not even a memory anymore. There won't be any memories. When we are with him, <laughs> he's all you can think about because he captures your everything. And that is, there's no better place to be. So I just believe that there's going to be a lot of judgment and correction. And, and chaos, and bitterness and anger and strife. What does it and look like? And brother will turn on brother. Yeah. It's going to get ugly. Do we, can we say exactly what it's going to look like? No, but when it gets dark, the light shines brighter. Yeah. Light. And we Isaiah are, 60, everybody's been quoting Isaiah 60 and saying the three days of darkness. I haven't, he's not spoken to me about, and I'm not refuting any of it. I'm just saying, if you read Isaiah 60, it says, uh, Darkness covers the earth and gross darkness of people, but the glory of the Most High comes down on his chosen and it shines through. He's not, we're not defeated. We're not left alone. Oh. He's not sending us into somewhere unprepared or ill-equipped. He goes with us and ahead of us. Yeah. He's he got our, go ahead. He does the preparation, but also all this time he's been saying, be ready, yeah, stay ready. And, and we read that the bride makes herself ready. So what does that look like? That looks like being with him, what we've just talked about. Yeah. In relationship with him. He does the work and he's going to do the work that he started. He's going to complete it until yeah. the day of Jesus Christ. And we're coming to the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, you know, he has given, like you said, you started out saying the winking. He winked of the eye and everyone thought, oh, he's not going to do anything. He likes it the way we do it. He mm -hmm. likes the R order. He likes me making the decisions. He doesn't care. That's not true. He no. stands there and he waits for people to ask him. He asks for people to want to know his opinion. He's at the door of the churches in Revelation, you know, knocking in some cases, you know, can I come into my own church? You know, so he's bringing the correction. He's bringing the correction. And that's what we need. However it looks. And you will be winnowed. Yeah. Because uh, when you were saying that, he, reminded, he gave me a word of judgment. I have it written down somewhere. But he said, I in my mercy shall winnow you with my winnowing fork, burning off the chaff. Though being tried by fire, your soul shall still be saved. Yeah. That's his mercy and his, I'm telling, I, I know you know this, but for everybody else, I felt his heart. I know his heart. He does not want, I don't care what you believe, does not want any to perish or to suffer, to go through this by yourself without him. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we both said this before, and this is like our, we may not talk about this again, because we know that we're supposed to go on to other topics, but this mm -hmm. is like a wait, this is like a last, a last, whatever he says, that's what we do. Wake up call. You know, this is, you know, it's like, okay, 
especially since, I mean, you've been heartbroken. You have felt his heart and he is heartbroken over this. He's heartbroken, but you've also said, and he, those prayers of the saints that are carried in those bowls, they've prayed and they've cried out for judgment of the evil, for wrath. Yeah. And, and he answers the, their prayers. The bowl has overflowed and been poured out. He has heard their prayers, not just from this generation, but from all generations. Can you imagine all the tears and all the, he hears the heart. When you pray from your heart, not do lip service, that moves him. If you're just doing lip service, like your mind is elsewhere and your mouth is uttering all these words, yeah. what knows. is that to him? It's yeah. just, you know, it's a facade. It's, yeah. he, he knows us by our heart. He knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. He reads our hearts. You know, he, he knows where you are. So you can't fake it. You know, there, people have said, fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> And so what I was saying about the week, the winking, again, this, we're talking about judgment. And so mm -hmm. bottom line is he's done waiting. This is the new beginning. Yeah. This is the new day. And the old will be brought down. It will go. Mm -hmm. So what I heard this week was, um, I heard, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. And so I just looked that up and it says in the Amplified, it says, woe, judgment is coming to those who are at ease and carefree in Zion, Judah. So ease is number 7600 in the Hebrew. And it's, it says secure in a bad sense. Hmm. So if you're secure in things, people or places, that's a bad sense. It's haughty. See, our security is to be in him, right? Mm -hmm. So I just mm -hmm. want to make that clear. Um, ease is haughty. Ease is... Um, it uses that word T U M U L T, tumult. Tumultuous, tumult, yeah. So it's saying, Woe to him that is in ease, at ease in Zion. And then Isaiah 39, excuse me, 32, 9 through 11, or I, I think it's just nine. It says, Rise up, daughter or women that are at ease. Hear my voice. You careless daughters, give each unto my speech. So what I was seeing in that, women, um, it's not about women. It's about the soul. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about the soul that's at ease. So my mind is not on him, you know, type thing. I'm doing what I want. It's people that are in Zion. If you're in Zion, you are in, you're at the holy mountain that Yehovah dwells in, Mount mm -hmm. Zion. So these are people that are in the church. These are not people outside of the church. Wow, and I see. Uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I see is separating the remnant from the remnant. Yeah. Those who are at ease. Those that are at ease are people that I'm saved. I'm happy. He doesn't want anything from me. But they don't realize that he is Lord. He's not just Savior. He's Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the beautiful thing about this is 
He wants you and I and everybody else to know that we're part of his family. You know, it's this is a beautiful picture that he wants to give us. He wants us to live in. He wants us to to experience every day that relationship with him. But these people have said, I'm at ease. I had I know I'm going to heaven. You know, I'm just going to live my life any way I want. So it's basically move, it's moving, it's not moving from the outer court into the holy place, into mm-hmm. the most holy place. It's staying in that outer court relationship. And it's remaining a baby. You know, if you're a baby when you are just saved, that's one thing. But if you're a baby when you've been saved for 30 years, that's another thing. And it's not. I made Paul mad. What's that? That made Paul mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. It did. So, why should we need to lay the foundation of the cross again? You should be teaching by now, not still needing milk. You should be eating meat. And the only person that can do it is you. There's no man. You know, there, I can remember, and I hate to say this, I'm not going to say who it is, but I saw someone right before they were in hospice. And you know, everybody knew that when you're in hospice, you're getting towards the end of your life. And this person was not doing well. And I remember saying um, to this person, you know, the priest is out there. So please, you know, just just hear me what I'm saying. So when I say priest, I'm really talking about a middleman. Mm-hmm. Middleman is out there. That's basically in a nutshell. And I said, you're going to sleep. If the priest comes in here, do you want me to wake you up? And that person said, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So Eventually the priest came in and he goes, oh, that person is sleeping. So I'll just leave. And I said, no, this person wants you to come and pray for them. So I woke the person up. The priest came over and right away it was like, ah, 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 like that. That's deception. Mm-hmm. It's deception. Sad. It is sad. And there's a lot of that sort of thing. And it's not just the priests. It's also some pastors that they are shepherding the sheep saying that they're the shepherd so anyhow um yeah so that's something that he's going to do away with i know that that's something he is going to shake oh yes 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 heavily and um actually you just mentioned leaving foundation going on um and that was another thing you know sometimes people i know of people that have had visions and you know it's kind of a common thing to have a vision of a house that's being completed so it's like (laughs) okay so it is a common thing so but what i want to say about that is a lot of times what people think is they they think that He's building my house in heaven. He's building my house in heaven. And it's not quite done yet. You know, it's not time for me to leave yet. When maybe he's trying to finish you. He's building you, the house of God. 
Because he said what? In my come, home. Oh, go ahead. Come, come, let us, come let us make our home in them. Yes. Yes, in my father's house are many dwelling places. Yes. But we are his dwelling place. Many dwelling places. We are many members, one body, one head. And the work that he does is the work that he's going to complete himself. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't do it. We no, can't be confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus day Christ. Of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so, um, let me just see what else. So we know that Zion. I've already mentioned this. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to read a couple of things and then I'm going to say um, something else. But Isaiah 8, 18 says, here I am. And the children of the Lord has, has given me as signs and symbols in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in, on Zion. So I'm making a point that Mount Zion is where Yehovah dwells. Um, Psalm 74 Two, don't forget that we are your beloved ones. Wrap us back into your heart again, for you choose us. You brought us out of slavery and bondage and made us your favored ones, your favored ones, your Zion people, your home on the earth. And then, so person and thing that I was thinking about was the vision that you had um where there was a gate oh yeah there's an architect and you know in the song of Solomon the eastern about, gate yeah it talks about that archway yeah. as being an archway of trust that's what it calls it, the archway of mm. trust. And so you noticed, and I'll let you talk about it, the fact that the gate was open, you walked through it. We found mm -hmm. that the eastern gate actually was the gate that was closed. And you can you can talk about it. I don't mean to I didn't know. No, go ahead. I'll I'll okay. fill in all the blanks. Okay. So we found that the Eastern gate was the one that was guarded, was guarded yep. so that, that no one could go back in, right? So mm -hmm. the Lord showed you that the gate was open and it had an archway. And then you researched it and you found, he said, Google it. You Google it. <laughs> I think that's what he said, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> and you saw that there was an arch. And I love that because Somebody went to Jerusalem not too long ago, and they took a lot of pictures. There's a lot of arches, I noticed. It's kind of like a really a common thing in that area. And so this gate had an arch. And then you said, from there, there was a up. high mountain. Yeah. And he said, come, let's run up the mountain, because there are new things I want to show you. So we can see that as a picture of Mount Zion. We can see that his holy mountain where he dwells, it's a high mountain. And if you are at ease, you're not going to climb it. You know, we're, we're to rest in his rest, but we strive to get into that rest. It's not that we strive for salvation. We strive through our, our souls, our minds, our wills, and our emotions trying to hold us back. So there's a striving to get into that place of rest, and it's his rest. It's not, it's not um, our rest. It's our <laughs> rest to him. Right? Yeah. So, so there's no ease that's involved here other than to strive to get into that rest. Now, if you had to climb a mountain, 
that tells me there's some activity, there's some movement, there's some relationship. He wanted, he said, come with me, I'm going to show you some things. And so that tells me that you were moving with him. Ease is, is not moving. I'm just trying to say the difference. Yeah. Do you have anything that you want to add there? No, you don't know. You know, it's, it's a, there's a hunger. How can I describe it? In this place of rest, there is a desire to keep running after him for more and more. And the more and more you hunger, the more you want to learn, the more you learn his ways. It's just a, it's a constant striving to, to learn, though you are in a place of rest, it's a constant hunger for more of him. Because he will never leave you satisfied, but he'll leave you just satisfied enough so you want more. And in that wanting more, you run after him. You go up that mountain. You grab a hold of his hand and he will lead you. You can't do it if you're watching TV and on your phone and listening to radio and shopping and you're involved in all the world stuff. Yeah. And we've talked about before the distractions. Those are yeah. just, <clears throat> and that's, those are worldly distractions that mm -hmm. keep you from moving forward with him. So, you know, Yahushua said a lot of different things when he was here, and I'm almost done. But when he was on the earth, he said two, two things, and it, more than two things. But he said in John 9, 39, he said, for judgment, I am come into this world. Okay. And then he said in John 10, 10, I am come. This is, I don't know what translation it is that they might have life. Okay, so when we look at this, so for judgment, I am come into this world and I have come that they might have life. Some people look at it and they say, this is contrary to each other. That's where the confusion comes in because they say that this doesn't make sense. He says, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. But then he also says, I come to bring peace. Yeah. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It does make perfect sense. <laughs> so give me a little bit about how it makes sense to you, if you, if you want. I have come to judge the soul. I automatically go to the cross. Yeah. Because... Cursed is a man that hangs on a tree because they have been judged. So we have been judged and found guilty. He came to bring judgment, to fulfill the judgment of the law and the prophets. And he has come to bring peace. That's before the cross, on the cross, judgment. After the cross, peace and life that more abundantly. It's his life. Yeah, yeah. And we get to live it with him. And so all of it goes together. Mm -hmm. So that's good. I just wanted you to explain that. That's all you did. Good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so there, I'm just going to kind of, um, I just, I'm getting to the end of this. I'm going to skip a lot. There's no rush. You, don't worry about it. Well, um, we, we've talked about he's getting, the Babylon is coming down mm -hmm. and that religious, religious confusion is big. And I, I love, and I'll just say this, I'm going to speak for you again. Okay. I don't know if you've actually shared this before, but you said, I hate religion. I do. And what did he say? Me too. <laughs> and so if you're a religious person that just bothered you you know 
he's not religious. This is all about life. This is yeah. all. So um, the Lord, it says in Zephaniah 2.11, the Lord will be terrifying to them when he starves all the gods of the earth. And that's what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Then the nations of every shore will bow and worship to him, each in its own place. And so it says the Lord will be terrifying to them when he starves all the gods of the earth. So it's little g. It's those things, those idols. Mm -hmm. Starve, another translation says famish or destroy. So that's what this is all about. This is all, this is, it's actually beautiful. It's beautiful. And I've made a lot of points here. Talked about peace. We've already talked about that. You know, another thing, and I'm getting to the very end of this, but the other thing is we've talked about Revelation 3, 15 through 16, the church of Laodicea. And that, he has talked about it too. That's a church that's in ease. Yeah. So those churches will receive judgment because, and I'm going to give it to you in a minute, because I, I want you, if you there's something that you want to share that he said, but it was it's about the lukewarm. And it's it says, you know, I I would want you to be either cold or hot. But because you're lukewarm about me, about this relationship, about my ways, about making me your the king and the Lord, about, you know, they called him when they walked on the earth, master, mm -hmm. he's master, he's savior. And we know that he's perfect. And we know that you are comforted by the fact that he's a master and a savior. But he's saying that these people, because you're not either hot or cold, but lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And another translation says spew. Another translation says vomit. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm, we're, this is a last call, possibly. If, if you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, he's the head and, and we're the body and he vomits someone out. That tells me they're out of Christ. And I do, I do know that there's a progression in that and I, about being in Christ, which I'm not talking about today, but that tells me that you're out of protection. Does it tell me that you, that you can't come back? No. And it, and he tells them how they can come back. And all he wants is a repentant heart. He wants you to say, I see. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. <laughs> and what I've done in my life and what I'm doing right now does not please you. You know, how many times have we heard Christians are hypocritical. It's hypocrisy. Those are the ones that are lukewarm. Those are the ones in many cases who do not know him, but they're, they're very religious and they will fight you. Oh yeah. Mean in some cases. They do not have the nature of Christ. And he's just saying today, 
If you hear my voice, you know, he doesn't want your heart to be troubled. He wants you to come to him. He wants your heart. He wants all of you. We're at a crucial point and there really is no more delay. And no one wants to be spewed out of his mouth. You know. The enemy will make you question. That's all I hear are question marks like, no, don't. Don't listen to even your own thoughts. Listen to him. Go to him first so you can hear him. Yeah. And, and also, we have a comforter. We have a teacher. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit was given to us as a gift, you know, some, another comforter, God in you, who will teach you, who will, oh, yeah. who will guide your heart, mm. who will help lead you on, in ways of righteousness in the way of the Lord, mm -hmm. who will help you help you and the one thing that the scripture says is you know about that do not grieve the holy spirit do not grieve holy spirit so i'm just going to read two more things and it says mm -hmm. romans 15 13 says may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 1, 9 through 11 says, since we first heard about you, we've kept you always in our prayers that you would receive the perfect knowledge of God's pleasure over your lives, making you reservoirs of every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding we pray that you would walk in the ways of true righteousness, pleasing God in every good thing you do. Then you'll become fruit bearing, bearing branches, fruit bearing branches, yielding to his life and maturing in the rich experience of knowing God in his fullness. And we pray that you would be energized with all his explosive power from the realm of his majestic or magnificent glory, filling you with hope. The Lord wants to give you hope today. If there's, if you've heard, this is again warning and it is an urgent warning and we we a plea a plea please, please. Yeah. we don't we don't enjoy talking about this we do know that the, through the finished work of christ the finished work of the cross you know, it's such a beautiful, 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 beautiful thing that we've been given. I can, you know, it's, it's life changing. It's where you died. You literally. It's where you don't want to crucify him again. <laughs> no. It's sad, you know, it's like, I, if I could describe it any other way, it's he, I'm a father. He is our heavenly father. I wouldn't want my children to be caught in a storm, unaware, first of all, unprotected, unequipped, with no knowledge of where I'm at, how to get a hold of me, when I can protect them if they are in my, with me, 
because then I could see them, I could watch over them, I could answer them when they ask me. And so if I can't see them or hear them and know where they're at, and I know a great and terrible storm is approaching very fast, my heart breaks. How much more do you think his heart aches for those children that just come? Simple as that. Yeah. And the thing is, he is merciful and he's he is having us speak about this because of his love for his people and love for those that do not know him yet as Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, he knows who they are. He's he's drawing them now. And I I hope that even through this conversation that sounded negative in many ways, the positive is the Lord's ways are different from our ways, but they bring life. His ways lead to abundant life in this earth, in this now, in this here, in this now. This isn't talking, even though eternal life happens now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in eternity now. We are seated in heavenly places already. That's right. Whether we understand it or not, it's true. But if you don't keep your eyes on him, you'll never see that because you're not going to see it from the world. Wow, yeah. You know, there's so many good things that he has in store for us right now. Mm -hmm. you know, there's so, like you said, we're seated in the heavenlies. Okay, there's a, there's a point where you read about it, you read about it, and then you start to experience it, right? Mm -hmm. Every good and perfect gift is given from above. It's from the spirit realm. We are spirit beings first. That's our true reality. We are, if you want to call it, we are suffering the human experience. <laughs> Through our suffering, <laughs> we come out of the human into the, the spirit, the understanding too. Yeah. What he's doing in many ways is he is taking the wrong and writing it. Mm -hmm. He's taking what happened even in the garden. And he is restoring us back to that place where we know him in the spirit, in the cool of the day, the spirit yeah. relationship with him. We, we walk with him, we talk with him. Yes, in a place of <laughs> peace and yeah. love. In relationship that's where he's bringing us and he knows how to do it and judgment does it fire does it mm -hmm. he's coming he's coming first in a way that you may not recognize, but you'll know it's him. Many oh, will yeah. know it's him. The whole world will see him, however they see him. Mm -hmm. He's coming. I got an eyelash bugging me. Okay. To I hate it when you have these long eyelashes getting away. <laughs> oh, they're just horrible. <laughs> Just kidding. That was not funny. But anyhow. I thought it was. <laughs> All right. You know, um, just to kind of finish this conversation. Mm -hmm. This is all about bringing his family back. The 
it's all about, and I want to say this one more time because I don't want to end on a bad note. I want to end on the truth. We've talked about it. We've, we, we've, everything has been woven in together. We've talked about the negative and then we put in the positive. What, what the purpose is, there's a purpose for everything. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose for everything. He told Adam to have dominion over oh. he, everything everything he wanted adam to rule in the earth mm -hmm. he was adam was a picture of the heavenly father our father in heaven so you know it was like a mirror you know see what i'm doing adam adam you do it you know and uh -huh. So what's happening? He is restoring that where he first has to rule and reign in your life before you can rule and reign. He teaches you. He, you have to allow him to be Lord and Savior, uh, King, King of Kings and Lord of Lords mm -hmm. before you can grow into that position where you can even rule the same way that he rules. And it, we started with a vision of diadems being given out. From the inside out of his robe, like opening up the inside out and laid on the table. But it was the table. So what does that mean? It means there will be a people, his manifested sons of God, who will rule and reign in righteousness, just like him. He's not going to give a royal diadem to a baby. Mm -hmm. He's not going to give a royal diadem scepter or whatever else to a teenager that's why that's why this is so important that's why we have to shake ourselves if we're in ease at ease in zion shake yourself there's no more winking this is a time to go to him and the goal was to bring us into that place we've talked about, but also the fullness of the stature of Christ. Of the knowledge of Christ, yes. That's it. So. You know what I love about it too, if I can interject? Yeah. I love everything about this. Thank you, Lord, for, I love how this, this is all just so, it captures me. <laughs> but he said, come, let us make man in our image and likeness. He said at the beginning, he also said it at the cross. And, and he, he said, and he said, come, let us make our dwelling place in them. In the beginning and at the cross. You see, he is the alpha and the omega. The omega brings you back to the alpha. The new beginning. We are, it's, it's all, yeah, in a circle, complete. And like you've said, when you saw that table, you know, it was like in a circular. When you, you've seen, I think even this table is kind of a circular. It is, yeah. It's always from him, through him, to him, from him, through him, to him, from him, through him, to him. Mm beautiful even in the throne room i've seen the where there would be a circle there was a, a round opening but i could see the earth through the round opening there's always a circle i've been at the table where it looked like a huge knight's round table it's always circular i, I i've seen this the circle the stars circling around the woman's head i've seen the the wreath the gold a green wreath 
it was circular, and then it was spinning, and sparks were coming out, silver in a circle. Everything is the pie. He gave me the symbol of pie, which is the, the how you measure the diameter of the circumference of a circle. It's a never an infinite number. It just goes on and on and on. And he has shown me spirals. You went up a spiral staircase. The staircase moved you up. You didn't move. Wow. Yeah. So. Lord, we thank you for this. I pray, Lord, for those who would listen, who would at least lend an ear to give it thought. And in giving it thought, it would take root. And that it would pierce them deeply. That only you can do, Lord. It's never too late. But time is not on their side. <coughs> Lord, that you, there's nothing impossible for you to do. Nothing. That you move in ways unseen and unknown to man. And this is good. For we cannot boast about anything, but we trust and rely on you for everything. That this would pierce their hearts and change them into repentance. That their hearts would bleed for you. That the piercing of their hearts, all of that would be taken away and as it's taken away they're drawn closer to you i pray they would run to you forsaking anything and everything anyone and everyone to run after you yes. i know that you Many would think, well, what about, what about them? I'm not a good Christian if I don't, don't worry about it. Go to him first. He will equip you. He will instruct you. He will give you direction on what to do next. You do not go out on your own. You cannot go into battle without getting orders from the commander. You don't know what to do. You may think you do. But these are new times. This is a new day. We have never been this way before. We do not know. Those who think you do, please understand. He has said, where we are going, no man has never gone before. To hold his hand, not man's, not your ego, not pride, not glorious revelations. You hold his hand. For anything else you hold on to will be removed. But Lord, I pray that they would run after you, forsaking all. This is the last call. This is the last call. Yes, Lord. So thank you. When I mm. hear this is the last call, that just, it breaks my heart. But it is, yeah. it is what it is. What, what has begun cannot be stopped. No. So please consider everything that has been said today and know that the <laughs> Lord loves you. And that's why we're talking about this. If you need prayer or anything, I know we've invited you to come up. And I don't, I didn't see that anybody tried to. But if you need to talk to anyone, you can get in touch with either one of us and we'll be happy, happy to connect with you. And um, 
We love you. The Lord loves you more than we do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does. You. Trust me. Trust us. He does. He loves you so much. His heart aches for you guys. Yes, yes. And so we will see you next time. So I hope you have a good week. Just connect with him. Make it a new, start with a little bit of a habit and then go with it and you'll enjoy every minute of it. Mm -hmm. So we will see you soon. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>